Hello, Paul. Hello again. I'm very excited that we'll today uh, talk about the fourth top major nonconformity um, addressed to 8511, uh, which means actually control plan. One of the most basic document uh, to control the quality. Um, can you maybe reveal what here would be expected? Yeah, and, and this is a really, really, it sounds simple, but it's a really difficult subject, I think. Let me explain why. So ITF does not prescribe the actual template for a control plan. So that could be specified by the customer. I think we all know in the APQP manual, there is, an a, there is a template for control plan. But remember that APQP manual is not an ITF manual. So what it says in IETF 16949 is that any control plan at minimum must meet the Annex A requirements. And that is mandatory, it's not optional that at any control plan in any of the ITF certified companies, we should better look at the control plan, compare it against Annex A, and the control plan should contain all the relevant information required. In Annex A, and also in the requirement, it talks about different types of control plan. So if we're manufacturing prototypes, we might have a pre uh, a prototype control plan. It's mandatory to have a pre-production control plan as we're ramping up for full production. And then obviously that's transitioned in to a production control plan. So a lot of organizations I think get caught out. For example, they make prototypes, but they don't have a control plan to say how they're controlling the manufacturing. The other thing it says, is that for products we're producing on a common process, we can have a family control plan. Yeah? Now, that brings advantages, but it also brings potential risks. So a family control plan may be that we manage 10, 10 products that are all very similar. They go through the same steps within the manufacturing process, but maybe they're slightly different size. But from a control point of view, the controls are identical. So rather than having 10 separate control plans, which then would bring a problem with updating, that for example, if we have a problem with one, we have to remember to go back and update the other nine, it means we can go back to that family control plan. But then there has to be very strong links between the family control plan and all the supporting information on the actual detailed specifications, the tolerances, et cetera, that might be different for those 10 different products within the family. So I think a lot of problems come about by organizations trying to develop very, very generic control plans that politely are just a waste of space. Yet they've just been developed to show the auditor they're not being used in any way, shape or form to control the process. So people either go too generic or they go too specific. And there's pros and cons to both of those, but both of those could cause a major nonconformity. I've been to companies that have a thousand products and they have a thousand control plans, but they're all very similar products. So if they have a failure in one, that means they need to change the controls. They've got to go back and update 999 other control plans. And it just becomes a huge administrative burden. And then the auditor will say, oh, yeah, but the control plans have not been updated by a multidisciplinary team. Yeah, which, again, could cause the, the basis for a nonconformity. So I think there's a whole host of problems that would cause the major nonconformity. Um, but I think organizations, if they're going to try and prevent this, really have to challenge themselves. What is the purpose of the control plan in our organization? Why are we developing it? Who's going to look at it? How are we going to ensure that all the linkages between the PFMEA, the control plan, and the work instructions will always be there 
if we're proposing or making any changes to the document. And also, actually, EITF uh, also um, states in which con under which condition you have to um, at least review your control plan. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, even if the, yeah, and even if there haven't been problems, IETF says that the control plan should be reviewed based upon a risk analysis, a frequency based upon a risk analysis. Mm -hmm. And a lot of organizations don't have a robust process to ensure that happens. So I think we all know from our previous discussion that if we have problems, we have to go back and review the control plan. But we also proactively need to make sure that the control plan is suitable for ensuring that we're making conforming product. And if we need to improve the controls, we start off by looking at the FMEA and then we update the relevant controls in the control plan. Exactly. We didn't say anything about special characteristics. Um, probably this is, uh, I hope this is so important topic that this will not be the reason why to rise and not major nonconformity. But yeah. also uh, what is really worth to say, control plan was top one, uh, first major, uh, I'm sorry, first minor, minor nonconformity non in the yeah. list of top 10 minor nonconformities. Um, yeah. So also yeah. this, this shows the importance of control plan, um, how auditors really uh, pay attention to this document. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's really important in the IETF rules that IETF say in every part of a third party audit that the auditor, when they're auditing manufacturing, which is one third of the audit time, that they must make reference to PFMEA and they must make reference to the control plan. So, yeah. But if I'm cynical, I could also say it's low hanging fruit, that if an auditor wants to find a non-conformance, if they dig deep enough, they will find a non-conformity against the control plan. Yeah. So um, it's very easy for the auditor to find a non-conformity. OK, thank you, Paul, for um, control plan today. Um, let's maybe tell. Uh, to, to, to the people who are watching us, um, what will be the fifth major in conformity raised in 2021? Okay, and we'll, we'll alternate it. I'll let you reveal that one. Um, I would say this is also not a surprise for me. Uh, this is um, against MSA, so the clause 71511. Yeah, okay. Now we look forward to that discussion. Next time we'll get a little bit technical then. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.